Hello there everyone, this is UXW Bill, and today we're going to be taking a look at a refrigerator from another time. Before we get to that though, I'd like to take just a moment of your time and address all of my viewership. In all the many years that I've been here on YouTube, the following that I have amassed has been nothing short of incredible, and I want to thank you all for being a part of that. I know that as of late I've not been making a whole lot of videos, but I've still been on YouTube responding to comments. I'm still very much alive and well, and I would ask you if you have any respect for me at all, and I know that many of you do, please stop fanboying me when I make comments on other people's videos. Yes, I'm still here. If you're not seeing my videos, if you're not seeing my comments, if you're not seeing the things I'm doing, something is wrong with the device that you're using to ingest YouTube or watch YouTube or whatever it is the cool kids are doing with YouTube today, which probably isn't what the cool kids are doing at all. They're probably doing things that confuse and frighten a caveman like me, like Insta TikToks and Facegrams and <laughs> I don't even know. So what do we have here? Well, just another thing that I totally didn't need and I will not be keeping this. This will be donated, maybe sold, something along those lines. No, it's not available here on YouTube because as a long-standing rule I do not sell, trade, or give away items to random people on YouTube. I value my privacy and would appreciate your respecting it. This is a Norge refrigerator freezer. It is a product, or was a product, of an automotive parts manufacturer known as Borg Warner. Borg Warner owned Norge pretty much from their inception right up until about 1968 or so. And being as this says, it is a product of Borg Warner, here on this somewhat aged and slightly distorted nameplate, we know that it can't be a whole lot newer than that. Sometime after that, the Fetters Air Conditioner Manufacturing Company acquired the Norge brand from Borg Warner. After that, things get a little fuzzy, and all we know for sure is that today the brand name is defunct. However, I did once see from the late 1990s, or sometime in the 1990s, a Norge branded refrigerator that when I looked at the nameplate inside, the company had a Bloomington or Normal, Illinois address. Unfortunately, I don't remember what the name of the company was, and it was probably just a front for some more well-established name, like a Whirlpool or an Electrolux or something along those lines. So we know at a minimum this thing's got to be over 50 years old. This is actually a curbside rescue, and as I said previously, even though I know I did not need this, there was a chest freezer sitting next to it that a particularly cruel fate had befallen. Somebody who wasn't messing around cut that sucker in half, <laughs> and I just couldn't bear the thought of that happening to this thing. It's not much to look at on the outside, but if we look on the inside, although the leveling feet definitely need some adjustment, and the door seal's not real pretty anymore. The interior is not half bad. There's supposed to be a glass plate down here. Someone mentioned that to me. And apparently it has long ago been lost to the sands of time. Probably broken. Didn't happen on my watch. This is, of course, not a frost-free model. I have this little tray that pulls out here that collects water drippings and such from the freezer whenever you defrost it. And, of course, the freezer is one with the refrigerator compartment so that the cold, as it is produced, actually drifts down and provides slightly less cooling to the items that need refrigeration but not freezing. It looks like someone has probably repaired this over the years. I'm guessing that these plastic standoffs to which this coil was once attached broke a long, long time ago, so somebody just shimmed them with plywood. This thing's not in showroom condition by any stretch of the imagination, but in a true testament to how well these old appliances were built, I will not expect that this thing has any difficulty in working. I'd be very surprised. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit. It could certainly be low on gas, not that it wouldn't have earned the right after all of these years, or it could have some kind of an electrical problem. For those of you who are interested, I'll try to get down here and we can take a look at the serial and model number data plate. I noted with great interest that this unit appears to be designed not just for 60 cycles at 115 nominal volts AC, it also appears to have been designed for use at 50 hertz cycles per second at 100 volts AC. The only place I'm aware of that being a standard 
is in Japan. And I don't really think they would have exported these to Japan at the time. For anyone who happens to be wondering, I do have the cover that goes over this. It's not much to look at, and I suspect it too was a frequent accident victim. There's really nothing under here. I am amazed that this thing's refrigeration system is still intact because those lines are so vulnerable. They tell you when you're moving this thing to truck it only from the door side. I don't see how that would have been a good idea because I could just imagine a hand truck rearing up and getting into one of those lines. It is possible that the voltage rating on this thing has to do with areas where the line voltage wouldn't have been high at the time when this was new. Rural areas, urban areas at the end of a particularly long run far, far away from the transformer. Something along, like, something along those lines. All the wire shelves are still there. The stuff in the door is still here. We've got shelves for eggs there. This is a dairy keeper. That's where you could put your butter and stuff. And then your various condiments for when you practice safe snacking. Ha ha. Go right here in the front. So let's go ahead and do a basic electrical check on this thing. Speaking of this thing's electrical hardware and wiring, here's a nice little diagram on the back panel. It shows you how they put it together. There's really not that much to this thing since it lacks an automatic defrost. I did note with great interest that they refer to the compressor starter as a Spencer relay. That's a term I've never heard before and Google was not much help but in looking around I finally determined that Spencer must have been a company and appears to have ended up in the hands of Texas Instruments. There's also a patent number down here that you probably can't read, especially when the candy ham doesn't want to focus. The label is a bit degraded here. I thought this would lead to something particularly interesting as concerns this refrigerator's design, but it's actually a General Electric patent from the late 1940s that has to do with the way the cabinet is put together. And then, of course, here is the caution notice stating that the cabinet should be trucked from the handle side only. We have our passively cooled condenser coil. This is just convection cooled. There's no fan here. Now, some people are very, very quick to say that an old refrigerator like this is just horrifyingly inefficient. And that's really not true. Although there certainly have been improvements to the efficiency of refrigeration systems over the years, the big energy consumption in these things comes not from the refrigeration system or the compressor, but rather from the defrosting heating elements that are inside. And since this model lacks that capability, it's actually not as inefficient as you might have been led to believe. This appears to be some kind of a quality inspection tag down here. I haven't tried to get it out because it's attached with a pretty beefy wire tie. And I have a feeling that as rusted as some of these refrigeration lines are, that attempting to pivot this condenser coil out of the way even slightly to get at that would probably result in disaster. I can tell you that I have a Montgomery Ward private label signature 15 cubic foot chest freezer that has the same kind of tag on it, so I suspect that it was really made by Norge. Here's the compressor. There's no brand name to be seen on it, but judging by the model number, I would say that this is a Tecumseh model. You can also see there's a fair whack of dog hair down here. This being a particularly elderly appliance means that it only has a two-pin electrical cord. And while it could certainly be converted to a more modern three-pin grounded wiring system, and that probably should be done for anyone who would use this on a regular basis, this is certainly functional for now, especially since the cord doesn't appear to have any major problems, no missing chunks of insulation, no cracking or rotting, nothing along those lines. But it does mean that if there were to be a problem somewhere with this thing's electrical wiring or in that compressor itself, that it could potentially continue running, but the cabinet of the refrigerator would become electrically live, just waiting for someone to come along and get a potentially very exciting, dare I say shocking, surprise. So what I have right here is a good old Supco M500 Megometer. This is a high voltage tester and it's lot in life, if it doesn't pop off of where I've got it hooked up here. <laughs> 
Its lot in life is to perform an insulation breakdown test by applying a very high voltage to one side of the power line and the chassis of the device under test. And depending upon which one of these LEDs light, you'll find out whether or not you have an insulation breakdown, some partially shorted to ground windings inside the compressor, something along those lines. There's a bad range, there's a caution range, and there's a good range. Again, we'll make sure we're hooked up properly here. You really don't want to touch the appliance under test while you're operating this tester because you could have a shocking experience if there is such a problem. And of course the best way to do this test would be right at the compressor motor behind that cover that hides the starting relay and the overload. But being as all this dog hair might well be the only thing that's keeping this thing alive at this point, I'm not going to tempt fate by removing those components. So we'll do it this way. I've made sure that the thermostat inside the box is turned on. So we should be able to get an accurate result. And yeah, it looks like we're probably in okay shape in that regard. We'll just go ahead and get the other side of the line here. It should read identically. But just to be thorough, we'll test there as well. So let's plug this thing in and see what it does. Okay, boys and girls, here we go. We may drop a circuit breaker or make some smoke, but at least I don't think we'll end up electrifying the cabinet of the poor old refrigerator. I know everybody loves this too. Smoke test! Fired right up. What more could you want? Now we'll just let it sit and run for a while. Get itself into a more normal state of operation. Get the box temperature pulled down. And just see where we happen to be. I'd like you to take just a moment. And if you've sped up this video, put it back on normal speed. Turn up your speakers and try to ignore all the noises that the neighbors are making. And just listen to how quiet that compressor is. That is impressive. I can barely hear it from right here. And when I step more than a few feet away from this thing, I, I really wondered if it was still running. What you're hearing right now is the sound of refrigerant coursing through this thing's metallic veins as the compressor pumps it around. This thing is rejecting a very decent amount of heat through this condenser. These loops are almost too hot to touch. If you find yourself dragging an old forgotten refrigeration system like this one back to life, just bear in mind that you need to give these things time to acclimate and get into their normal running condition. A good case in point, when I first started this thing up after waiting for just a couple of minutes, it didn't seem like there was a great deal of heat rejection going on through this condenser. I started wondering, you know, is it a little bit low on charge? Maybe the compressor's not really pumping up to its full capacity. But here we are after it's been running for about 15 minutes, and yeah, it's, it's really rejecting the heat now. All these loops are quite hot. And the sound, the sound is also a good indication sometimes as to the health of a refrigeration system. When they're low, you can oftentimes hear it. 
All right, it's not terribly obvious to look at it through the camcorder's point of view, but I am fast running out of daylight. These days are getting shorter here in the waning moments of summer. But being as I'm running out of daylight, and I really don't have the kind of indoor lighting that I'd like to have here in the garage, i got to be getting this video wrapped up. I'm sure you'd like that as well, those of you who think that I do nothing but go on and on and on. Went ahead and slapped a clamp meter on it and stuck a couple of Bluetooth capable meters inside the box as well. So we wouldn't have any wires running through this possibly compromised seal on the front and making the situation any worse than it might already happen to be. Our nameplate rating is 1.8 amps and our amp clamp says that we're pulling 1.56 and here in just a moment we'll be back to look at the temperature and I think that blinking light that you see is Mr. iPhone trying to determine whether or not someone's holding it up to their ear. Interesting. I always wondered how they did that. I suppose that makes as much sense as any way, though. Get your ear up close to it, and the light reflects off of it, and it knows to turn the display off. Well, they shouldn't be doing that right now. Here's the meter that's stuck in the freezer compartment, this being an inexpensive Chinese Bluetooth-equipped DMM. It only reads on the meter and the application both, in degrees Celsius, which isn't a problem for most of the world. Not a problem for me. I can always convert it. I know we're under freezing either way. It's interesting though, the meter display and the app both have the character to indicate degrees Fahrenheit, but they're not actually using it, which is kind of surprising. And then we'll take a look at what the temperature is doing down in the refrigeration compartment. It's When I last looked at it, it wasn't quite as good as I'd hoped it would be, We've only been running for six hours now. This is what a meter located in the refrigeration compartment happens to see, and I'm a little concerned about this. This temperature needs to be lower than it is. I would really want to see that ideally somewhere below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Although to be fair, this thing has only been running for about six hours now, though it did just cycle off on its thermostat, which is actually set at the midpoint. I'll give this thing the benefit of the doubt. The freezer compartment certainly looks very good, and I have no issue with the amount of heat that it's been rejecting when it was running. That condenser coil got really, really impressively hot. I'd say easily north of 120 degrees. But as I started to say, I'll give this thing the benefit of the doubt, give it 24 hours to fully stabilize, and then I'll update the video description that I know all of you read religiously with the results that I happen to get. In the meantime, though, being as the daylight's about gone and I've said about everything there is to say as concerns this thing, although I never did go and get the plate that covers the bottom of it, maybe I'll put it on there and make that the video thumbnail or something <laughs> so you can see what it looks like. But I would like to thank you, as always, for watching, and do feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one. But wait, there's more! Yeah, I went ahead and threw a couple bottles of water in here. They're, they're cool, but I wouldn't say they're real cold. Let's see what the ones in the freezer compartment are doing. These had a skin of ice on them earlier. They're not quite frozen solid. At least that one's not. It's pretty, pretty tight here at the bottom, though. Yeah, none of them are frozen solid, but I'll bet if they had a little more time in here... It'll probably be doing all right as well, although that one is not as cold as I would have hoped. I don't even think there's ice crystals in that one. Listen to that refrigerant boiling off in there. Yeah, I can feel that. It just kicked on again. <laughs>